Hello, everyone. Welcome to Development Palace. I'm Aaron Loomis coming to you from the Ventura Cigar Company studio. With me today is June Lou and John McTavish. How are you guys doing? Monday, Good. Monday. Yeah, 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 yeah. So today we are talking about the Southern Draw Jacob's Ladder Brimstone. Uh, cigar is a Salomon, uh, six inch by 56 ring gauge. Comes out of the Tabacalera AJ Fernandez factory in Nicaragua. Uh, wrapper is Pennsylvania Broadleaf, uh, binder is from the United States, filler is from Nicaragua and the Dominican Republic. It is blended by Robert Holt, price point is $11.99, and this cigar was released in July of 2019. So with all that out of the way, June, what was your overall experience like with this cigar? Um, it was an average experience for me, um, and to be completely blunt, it's it's a miss um, for me. So, you know, there's... Lack of balance. Uh, it's a lot of monotony in the smoking experience. Um, you know, I, I was expecting, you know, what kind of, I think this is what, like, uh, Robert's third iteration of the Jacob's Ladder, right? Um, you know, from the previous ones, there's like this really nice chalky kind of a viscous kind of a mouthfeel, which I absolutely got as, you know, I was expected with such heavy tobacco. Um, but what was incredibly lacking was it just didn't layer enough flavors. Uh, you know, uh, and, and on top of that, um, you know, super earthy, like dirt, red pepper, a lot of cedar. Um, and it just lacked a lot of like the softer flavors that uh, I enjoy from the other iterations. Like, you know, I remember like the previous ones had, even with all of that, it had this really nice way of breaking through all that by having like a nice creamy chocolate aspect to it, like cocoa kind of a thing going on. Um, you know, none of, the, none of that was present within this one. So, uh, but disappointed. How about you, John? Yeah, I was a huge fan of the original Jacob's Ladder. Um, and I was, I mean, I, I guess maybe I was buying the hype cause I was kind of anticipating this to be competing with it. Um, I think the first third showed some promise. There was some, some stewed fruit, some, um, cedar, some habanero pepper, and I kind of figured that would calm down and give way to some of the maybe not obviously a carbon copy of the original, but similar profile. Um, and the only thing that I really got from this that I got in the original blend was the creaminess. Um, the original blend had this really dark stone fruit to me cut through that earthiness. So you can't just have earthiness by itself because it's it's just exhausting on the palate and the same thing with if you have tannic cedar it's just it's exhausting on the palate and i kind of had that both in the middle third and the last third so you know it wasn't bad it just it didn't it didn't rise itself above what an average blend is and uh, i really wanted to like this cigar because i really enjoyed the original um and i think there was a lot of talk about this being stronger than the original I don't think that was the case either. I would say this, this, if anything, I would say this is maybe like a quarter notch below strength uh, below the original. Um, so unfortunately, uh, unfortunately it was a bit of a miss. I mean, I guess the one thing we can talk about cause it's coming out of AJ's factory is uh, burn was fantastic and uh draw was near perfect. Oh, pardon me. That's not true. That's right. <laughs> I take that back. So, I had a weird thing go on with the with the draw, and I'm not sure if it's because the the perfecto shape, the salmon shape. So initially, it was like four notches tight, and I was like, "That doesn't seem right out of an AJ cigar." And I was like, "Am I going to have to rate this subpar for the draw?" And then it kind of got to the you know like the can you say nipple? Is nipple the right place on the salmon? Sure. You can uh, say shoulder if you don't want to be a shoulder. Guy. Yeah, I don't want to make it weird. So it went from four notches tight, it got to the shoulder, and then it backed off to almost two notches tight. And I was like, okay, well, that's better. And then it kind of got partway into the first third, and then it was like one to two notches. And I'm like, okay, weird. I mean, normally Salomon start out a little snug, but to go from four notches to one notch, I was like, weird. So I kind of averaged it through that, you know, experience. But um, it, it – the, the draw was fine from that point on, so it's kind of weird. Anyways, long story short, Aaron, how was your experience? Yeah, the scar started with a nice depth and combination of flavors. Uh, by the second, third, some dry earth had settled in and kind of caused some uh, overall dryness for my palate, kind of knocked the enjoyment down a bit. Um, construction was perfect. Uh, strength was medium full most of the way for me. Um, I thought the cigar was a 
a fairly nice offering in the line, but I don't feel that it reaches the level or goes kind of beyond the, the previous iterations. Um, so the Lancero or the, the I think it was a Robusto and Toro before that. Um, you know, it's dark and strong, uh, but the dryness kind of just took away from the overall enjoyment for me. Um, so for fans of the brand and the line, you know, it's definitely something to try, but um, I would go with one of the other ones over, over this one. It just doesn't doesn't live up to, to what the other ones had had previously. Uh, so getting the scores, start at the top with me at 6.10. John, you were next at 5.95, and then uh, June at 5.75. So um, you're going first, um, slightly above average flavor profile with perfect construction. That's what kind of gets it into the sixes. Um, overall, it was, you know, it was just, overall, I thought it was average. I mean, it just, it started out kind of nice, but then it just got a little too dry for me. And I didn't, I didn't experience that with, with any of the other Vitolas that I've smoked this um, so John, five point nine five. I'm I'm still trying to get over the fact that you're the high scorer on two cigars. This this is like this is a weird day. Um, yeah, it's about right. Um, you know, I I kind of just finished talking about this that flavor profile wise, it's like a five six five. So it's average, and then the you know the construction and the draw kind of raise it up to just about a six. Um, you know, for me, I'm, I'm I'm disappointed because I've been really enjoying some of the stuff that Roberts put out. Um, I really enjoyed the original Jacob's Ladder, uh, but this one just doesn't doesn't reach that level for me. June, um, I mean, this is just pure mediocrity. So, you know, it's, Robert released a lot of cigars, so certainly one of them is going to hit, hopefully, right? So, uh, I actually I take that back. I did like the Desert Rose quite a bit because it was amazing. Yeah, that was a yeah. really good cigar. Actually. That was a really good cigar. Um, but yeah, this was just absolutely missed. Uh, and it's so disappointing because he was able to turn the other Jacob's ladders into something that was so unique. Um, but yeah, this one was a miss. All right. Any other final thoughts from you guys on this one? It'd be, it'd be interesting to try this in a different Vitola because it could very well be that the miss is, is a result of the, the tobacco ratios in a Salomon. Maybe a Lonsdale or something like that. Maybe it'll really pop with the Pennsylvania broadleaf. I don't know. Just throwing that out there. Maybe you didn't write, maybe you didn't like the right end. Yeah, that could be. I mean, I've been having to drink very heavily now to do review cigars out of the IPCBR. So <laughs> you never know. So I have one nitpicky thing on this cigar and it's not a big deal. It's just me being just something I'm thinking about. So Jacob's ladder, the tradition for this cigar is to have a cedar sleeve on at the foot. I think it does a disservice to this cigar because of the shape that you, the cedar sleeve kind of covers that the shape towards the foot. Mm. So somebody looking at this cigar, yeah, you um, can tell. I just think it's like a bellicoso, you know? Yeah, so I, I did. I think I, I, I understand did as well, that, Yeah. Yeah. I no. understand that for people that, you know, that you want to keep tradition for the line and all that stuff. And you want to make sure you have the cedar. I wouldn't put it on this one. I would leave the cedar sleeve off. I think you're going to get more attention if you just leave it off but i mean it's a good point because you know rolling a salamone is different than rolling any other brejo so yeah. you kind of want to show it off if you're going to do it yep exactly yeah all right if you're just catching the video on youtube be sure to subscribe to us we'll also check out the full written review on the website developingpalace.com follow us on all the social media channels and you can catch all of our review recaps on podcasts so itunes google play and podbean thank you for tuning in we will catch you on the next one